Let's start from the top of the microscope down. These are high eye point eyepieces. They're specifically designed for users with glasses because they have a high eye point and rubber padding to cushion your eyes. If you don't use glasses, you may want to fold these down. This is the adjustment for interpupillary distance, which is basically the distance between the center of your pupils. Each microscope user should adjust this distance before using the microscope. Adjust the interpupillary distance by moving the eyepieces together just until the two fields of view merge to form a single field, yet far enough apart to allow your eyes to look through each of them without moving. This knob here is the diopter adjustment. It's used to compensate for differences between eyes. One of the oculars has a diopter ring, and before using the microscope, each user should adjust the diopter ring in order to get the best image and avoid eye strain. To do this, first you focus on your image with the focus knobs below using the non-diopter eyepiece. And then you look through the diopter eyepiece and focus on the image by moving the diopter slider. If you have equal resolving power in both eyes, your diopter will be set to zero. Moving down to your objectives. The best way to switch objectives is to use the black rotating wheel. The reason for that is to avoid potentially off-centering your objectives. The best way to clean your objectives is with lens paper and isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. If your lens isn't too dirty, try breathing on the lens and then wiping it with a lens wipe. Never use anything that could corrode the surface of the lens and make your image cloudy, like chem wipes, acetone, or any harsh solvents. This is your stage. These knobs will control the movement of your stage and slide holder in the X and Y axis. If you spill anything on the stage, you can clean it very carefully with water or isopropyl alcohol, and if you spill anything under the slide holder, you can remove the screws and clean under it. On the side here, we have the microscope's focusing knobs. The outer focusing knob is a coarse focus, and the inner focusing knob is a fine focus. We also have the microscope's power button here. The LED has an auto shut off after two hours, which you can disable if you choose. This is the condenser. This slider indicates the aperture diaphragm size. These are the Kohler focusing knobs, which can be used to center the condenser to the field of view. In some student microscopes, we remove these screws and put captive screws. Below we have the field of view diaphragm, and back here we have the knob which controls the height of the condenser. This is the student version of the microscope, but we can easily add a camera in between the binocular head and the microscope body for imaging. First, we unscrew the binocular head, and then we put the camera in between the binocular head and the microscope body. In order to be able to rotate the binocular head, you have to keep the screw slightly loose here. This is the ICC camera module. The black button here switches the camera from computer mode to HDMI mode. The red button records an image onto this SD card, and the light here denotes different actions that the camera is making. In the back here, we have the camera connection ports. This is the HDMI port, which will allow you to project an image onto a monitor, and this is the USB port, which will allow you to connect to a PC and use the LAS Easy Student software. If you're in HDMI mode, you will need to connect to the USB to a PC or standalone USB kit in order to power the camera. The best way to carry the microscope is by putting one hand in this notch and your other hand in the carrying handle and lifting it. There's a cord wrap in the back and the cord length is designed to wrap so that the plug ends into the groove preventing it from unwrapping. <laughs>